Hi, you're welcome to Paranormal Captivity. Just recently, I hit my two year YouTube anniversary and to celebrate, I decided to do a Q&A. So a couple videos back, I asked you guys to ask me questions either in the comments of that video or on social media using the hashtag AskCatQs. So anybody who asked me a question, I'm going to list your name below. Thank you for participating in this and I'm gonna start answering your questions. What are your thoughts on the psychic twins? Do you think they're legit? And if yes, would you ever wanna collaborate with them? I don't know if I'm thinking, I mean, I'm thinking of psychic twins. I don't know if there's only one pair, uh, but I'm seeing two women with brown hair. I don't know if that's the psychic twins necessarily that you're talking about, uh, but if so, I don't know a whole lot about them. So as for the legitimacy, I don't really know, but if I ever had an opportunity to collaborate with psychic twins, I would totally be down. What do you think about the paranormal in terms of cyberspace? Can spirits and entities possess technology or even travel through it? I think they're able to influence technology in a lot of different ways because most of the like ghost hunting paranormal investigation tools are electronic and of course people experience like lights going on and off, TVs, radios, things like that. So I would say they definitely can manipulate it and move through it in their own way, but as for them actually like possessing it and being a part of it, no idea. I. It's not necessarily something I'm like, yes, definitely, but anything's possible. Have your opinions or beliefs in paranormal circumstances changed as you've gotten older? Were there things you believed in when you were younger that you no longer do? I would definitely say my beliefs have changed over the years in regard to the paranormal, but if anything, I'd say I believe in more stuff now than I did when I was little. And I'd say the more that I learn as I continue to grow, it's probably just gonna continue to like snowball into where I'm learning more and more about so many different things that I'm, I'm probably just gonna continue to find more things that I feel resonate with me that could be true. So yeah, they change and it's a good thing, I think. I think everybody should develop and grow and change as they, you know, learn more. Uh, somebody asked if I tell other people's stories on my channel. I do not. What is your zodiac sign and what's your favorite thing about it? I'm an Aquarius. And I like pretty much everything about it. I very much am a true Aquarius. Like when you read the description of an Aquarius, it's very much me to a T. So I find it just interesting how close I actually am to what my sign should be. I just realized I didn't have my Christmas lights on and I want them on, so I'm turning them on. Much more festive. What are your favorite mythical creatures? Mermaids? Fairies could be mythical, but could be elemental. So depends on how you feel about those. And then pretty much any cryptid could be considered a creature of myth. I do like the Loch Ness Monster. I think the Loch Ness Monster is pretty cool. But yeah, I would say mermaids probably number one. What is your favorite story from the Brothers Grimm? That's such a loaded question. I don't think I can pick, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are your thoughts about Donald Trump becoming the president? And uh, what are your opinions on president-related ghost stories like Lincoln's ghost and coincidences between Lincoln and Kennedy? I just came across a Lincoln-Kennedy comparison on Facebook the other day, actually. Uh, thoughts on Trump? When it comes to paranormal presidential stories, I actually have one related to Lincoln, also related to my hometown that I've wanted to film forever. I just haven't had an opportunity to do like an on foot tour of local haunted areas. So that will happen at some point. Would you ever try any paranormal games besides the ones you played with Britty 44 and if so, which ones? Uh, the only other time I ever did any kind of was for the Haunting Sunshine Girl Network. I did a couple collaborations with them as short films but they were films, like I didn't actually play the games. I personally don't really believe in the paranormal games, at least not much for myself, but I do like Ouija boards and that's kind of considered a paranormal game. And I'd always be open to playing them just for fun, so I don't know, maybe at some point I will. I'm curious about the cabinet behind you. I see up top what looks like a display of essential oils and I know there's tons of uses for them, but what do you do with them? I want to become like a fragrance maker. I know that sounds really kind of weird and lame. Tying back to the Aquarius thing as an air sign, like I really like smells. <laughs> so uh, I bought a perfume kit with the essential oils and not all of them are essential. Most of them are just fragrance oils. And I want to come out with some fragrances, but so far none of them have been super great. So 
I'm still perfecting that. And then the herbs I kind of went over in that um, video, but really you can use them for pretty much anything. Most of the time when I do, I kind of focus on what the intention of it is, and then I'll put it in like a little satchel and bring it with me wherever I go sometimes, but I don't do it very often. What is the scariest paranormal situation you've ever been in? I talk about this in my Ouija boards and my scariest paranormal experience video, but it was definitely, oh gosh, like 12 years ago, something like that, uh, whenever I stayed at the beach house with my cousin and we were basically chased out of the house by whatever was there. Uh, in hindsight, me being me now and knowing what I know and having equipment to capture things, I would have launched an investigation in a heartbeat. But at that moment in time, I was a little too freaked out, so we just bailed. Have you seen Stranger Things? Did you like it? And who's your favorite character? I actually haven't watched Stranger Things. I know I need to. Everyone's telling me I need to. <laughs> How are you exercising or reawakening your ability to see things like the Shadow Man? Mostly through like meditation um, and just keeping an open mind, trying to be aware all the time. Uh, I do a lot of just reading and research on psychic development all the time. So anything in regard to that, along with just being aware of things around me, uh, that pretty much is what's awakening to me, is just gaining knowledge. Can you do a video on the worst serial killers? Funny story, uh, my friend Annie, Lady Locks Life on here, she and I have tried to collaborate like three times now on a like mini series of collabs we want to do where we each talk about serial killers because it's a topic we both are super into and we've never talked about on our channels. At some point I'm going to have Annie featured in a video talking about her favorite serial killers, or I guess most interesting serial killers, and then I'm going to be featured on her channel talking about the ones that I'm most interested in. So it's coming in the future. Did Mozzie play around with the candy? Kiana, you're cute. Uh, <laughs> not unless uh, the ghost like moved like ghost and like went through it, because it didn't move. <laughs> Where do I stand on provoking entities? Do I find it offensive or necessary? That is a really good question. I think there is a right and wrong way to provoke, depending on the situation. Because I can't say completely I'm against it, because I've done it. Um, the instance that I talk about where something was in my house and we had poltergeist activity throwing stuff around my brother's room, my first instinct was to go in there and be like, nope, I'm gonna find out what this is. And I was talking out loud and I was a little more aggressive than I normally am. But it was more like challenging because I wanted to see it for myself. I was like, if something's here, I wanna know. And so I don't necessarily feel like that's a bad thing to challenge something to do something for you to prove it's it's there or to make itself known. I do, however, think it's a little weird when people kind of bully uh, things that aren't there physically. I think there's a fine line and if you push past it, you kind of go into a little ridiculousness. But I think if you're just asking for a sign or a signal or you're asking it to do something again, it's still challenging it, but I don't necessarily think that that's in a negative way. Tell us more about this training to be receptive to the paranormal. Uh, really, truly, it's just different forms of, of reading and meditation, but maybe, uh, since this seems to be something that a few of you have asked already, I will try and come up with something that I can include on this channel to help you guys uh, develop yours too. Let me, let me continue my development and then I'll help you do yours. What got you so interested in the paranormal? Uh, I went over this a few times, but mainly it was just knowing that I had a connection with the Shadow Man, knowing that I still was able to kind of cross that barrier between seeing it and communicating with it and turning it off and having that be a reality for me for a while. Ever since I knew that I had had that communication and that it was verified by my mom saying that I was communicating things that only her deceased brother knew, that, I mean, how could you not be interested in the paranormal at that point? Is there a situation you can think of that would scare you or freak you out so much that it would make you not like the paranormal anymore? Not really. <laughs> I think if something that intense happened, I, I probably would have a, an immediate human reaction of fear. Um, 
but then I would instantly, as soon as I got the situation in my head, I would want to go back and learn more. I would want to research further. So I don't think anything really could keep me away from the paranormal forever. Do you have any more paranormal investigations in the works? I really enjoyed the Revenant Acres stuff. Thank you. Uh, we actually did another paranormal investigation earlier this year, like spring-ish, and it was a beautiful, beautiful location. We had more people involved in the investigation, and we stayed there, we investigated as much as we could, nobody really felt anything creepy, and the footage that we did get to review didn't really have any activity in it at all. I had a little tiny bit of flashlight play, and we did the spirit boxes, so of course you get occasional things that match up there, but not a lot of it. Most of it really was just us hanging out and not getting much. So. I've kind of stepped away from doing investigations because I was a little heartbroken that I set up this amazing investigation to share with you guys and we got nothing. So at least for now, I'm waiting to see if there's another opportunity that presents itself to where I can do a, another investigation and hopefully have more activity to share with you. But at least for right now, I don't. I'm sorry. Is there any reason that your house might be haunted and that the shadow man is the shadow man? As I said before, I hope the shadow man is the same shadow man that I saw when I was little, uh, but I don't know. I really don't. As for my house being haunted, I really don't think it is. I think that I have some things that are drawn to me that sometimes um, make themselves known to me but my house doesn't feel like it's haunted. I grew up in a haunted house and it felt totally different. Although we did have some activity in our house the other day that I still need to fill you guys in on. What is your favorite paranormal topic to talk about and why? Personal experience, I would say, because it's either something that I have passionate excitement and experience with that I can share with you, or I know the people well enough that I'm sharing their experiences with you that I know for a fact that they are true, real experiences because I know the, the people that they're coming from. So I would say anytime that somebody I personally know tells me about a paranormal experience or I have one myself, those are my favorite things to share with you guys, for sure. My house is badly haunted. I've tried cleansing my house, but it keeps coming back. What can I do? My, my dog's on the stairs, sorry. I would say if you have done your, your cleansings and things still feel weird and don't feel right. Um, if you know of someone who you trust who is into this kind of stuff, maybe seek advice from them and see if they have any um, things that they can do in person for you. I know my friend Steph from Steph Sees Ghost, whenever they had experiences in her home, she contacted someone who became her mentor helped her figure out what they needed to do in her house and on her property to eliminate the activity or to get it to move on. So I would say if you could contact somebody who is local, who might have some psychic intuition, who if you feel connected to a certain following of a church, if that's what you feel drawn to, maybe just contact somebody who you trust who could maybe do a more thorough cleansing than what you'd be able to do on your own. If you could ask a question to a dead celebrity, who would it be, what would you ask and why? Oh, wow. Uh, maybe something that would be fun is to talk to Elvis and ask him if he knew that people would think that he was alive even after he wasn't and if he wanted me to perpetuate this rumor by pranking people into thinking that he was. <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, I don't know how to answer that question. I'm so sorry. I'd also love to talk to Edgar Allan Poe, but I don't know what I'd ask him. I'd just want to hang out with him. Ooh, or I'd want to talk to Michael Jackson. But it's not about who I want to talk to. I can't answer this question correctly. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what are your standards for a haunted house? A lot of activity would be necessary to conclude it to be haunted. And enough of a presence to it that most people upon entering pick up on the fact that it's got some extra energy. Do you believe in past lives? I definitely am interested in some of the stories of children talking about past life memories 
that they have no actual memory of in this life. That's super interesting to me. I always have felt like if I am living another life, that I'm living the one I'm living now again. And I don't know why, I've just always had that feeling. So in that instance, I do think it's definitely possible in because nobody knows what's next or after or what's been before. I definitely lean more towards yes than no. Could you do another video on books and stuff? Probably at some point, sure, yeah. How old are you and when is your birthday? I am 30 years old. I will be 31 on February 17th of 2017. Are you interested in conspiracy theories or just paranormal things? I love conspiracy theories. Absolutely love conspiracy theories. Uh, and I'm sure that there are some that I would consider weird enough and strange enough to incorporate onto here at some point. Any rhyme or reason when getting visited by special entities? Protection, guidance, new hair color. <laughs> You know, they might pop in to be like, hey, I heard she did her hair, which I'm, I'm doing again tonight or tomorrow. Uh, but who knows, really? I think that sometimes I can tell a difference between if something has more of a protective quality to it than if it doesn't, um, and, and more of a guidance to it. But that's more on like a spiritual level than necessarily paranormal. I would say when it comes to paranormal stuff, just... It'll pop in and out when it wants to, and it also depends on if it's residual or intelligent, or if it is some type of spiritual contact. So I would say, if it's residual, it's just gonna pop in when it pops in, like it always does and always will, because it's an imprinted energy and it's not really a visit. But as for the intelligent ones, I'm sure they could just pop in and out whenever they want. Do you have any creepy Christmas stories? The only thing I can think of, which I think I've mentioned in a video at some point, uh, would be that every Christmas growing up, my brother and I would wake up at the same time and it'd be in like the middle of the night. It's not like we heard our parents going to bed or anything. Like it was the middle of the night. We would both open our doors at the exact same time and look at each other. And then we would go check out the tree in the middle of the night every year. Um, and, and there was no real reason behind it. It was just like weird sibling connection thing, but that's probably my only creepy Christmas story. I've always wanted to do a Ouija board, but my mom is against it, so I've never been allowed to buy one. Do you have any ideas on how to get around my mom's beliefs against Ouija boards and still get one to do it? I really feel like if you are still living with your parents and they have very strong beliefs in not using a Ouija board, I really feel like out of respect, it would be best to not. Do you like pizza? Uh, vegan pizza, because I don't eat meat or cheese, so... I had some stellar pizza at a place called Pizza Rev in California when we went. Oh my god. I want to go back so bad. What's your favorite non-horror or creepy movie? Ah, uh, the first thing I think of is Anchorman. I love Anchorman. And Austin Powers. What is your favorite Doctor Who episode? And are you team Dalek or Cyberman? Uh, I like Daleks better. And as for favorite episode, probably David Tennant's last episode, but I can't, I can't watch it. I, I watch the, the clip and I cry, I can't watch it. What is one paranormal topic that you've always wanted to cover? I have so many, so many that I have actually like either wanted to, started to, and, and ditched it for some reason, or just haven't. But I know off the top of my head, disappearances in state parks across the US, men in black, doppelgangers, and, and now I'm blanking, but I know there's more. <laughs> What's your favorite paranormal story or legend? I really don't know if I can pick a favorite. Uh, I did just have one of my friends from Ghost Talk, uh, ghostcryer.com, the website that I was featured in in October, if you follow me on social media. He went over the story of Resurrection Mary, and I'd commented in there, and I was like, I totally want to do a video on this, uh, if that's cool. And he was like, that's awesome. So, Resurrection Mary is a really good one, and if you're not familiar with it, you probably actually are, and just don't know that it's called Resurrection Mary, but that's in an upcoming video. I live in Florida and was wondering if you and Alex would ever like to join me on an investigation sometime. <laughs> if I was in Florida? I'd probably totally be down, but I've never actually visited Florida, 
I've driven through the Panhandle on my way to New Orleans when I did a uh, mission trip years and years ago, but I've never actually been to Florida, so that would be a super cool opportunity. But I, uh, I work full-time job, so does Alex, and we don't really have money to travel. Do you think the spirits that were aware of spirit communication methods before their passing would make them stronger communicating after? I would say it would definitely help if I passed away and I didn't think that there was any way to communicate with anybody else. Then I probably wouldn't put forth an effort to try. Or, or I'd just be sad if I did get to visit them. So it would probably leave more of an impression of a feeling than an actual communication attempt. But if I knew, hey, if I, you know, come close to this device, I might be able to manipulate it and there's a chance that maybe I can communicate through this because people think that spirits can already, so let's try it, then I think that you would probably be able to uh, have a more likely success rate of communication. What is your most favorite YouTube video you have made? I'd say I'm really, really proud of our uninvited short. I'm also really, really proud of the two investigations that we did, especially the first one. I had so much fun at that investigation. And then really, I'd say I'm pretty proud of most of my content. Like, at the two-year point reflecting back, I think just putting yourself out there and making videos is something to be proud of in itself in some ways. Uh, especially if you guys had known at the time I was going through, like, different things. Uh, I was going through some big transitions during the times when I recorded some of my earlier videos. So the fact that that was a tool for me to get through tough times and to still be creative and expressionate and meet new people and do something fun, I have a lot of pride with that. So I would say those ones I mentioned are my favorites, but I really am really proud of this channel and how much it's grown overall. Do people always come back as spirits? I don't know. I'd lean more towards no. I think it really depends on your belief system, but for me, I remember one of the first things I ever felt true for me was I felt like if you believe something, that's probably what you're going to get. So I would say if you don't believe that you can come back as a spirit, you might not come back as a spirit. So I would say no, I don't think that you always will come back as one. Who is your favorite spirit? I like the shadow man. Mozzie. Some of the spirits that I've talked about on this channel are pretty fun. What was your first Ouija experience like? Good question. Uh, I don't honestly remember the first, but I would say exciting because it was something that I always wanted to keep doing and I never really felt like I had any scary Ouija experiences ever. So I would say for the most part, exciting. What paranormal phenomenon would you like to experience that you have not yet? I would say uh, I just went over this not too long ago, but physical mediumship involving like ectoplasm, mediums being able to produce things within a cabinet. If you're not familiar with that, it'd be like either a closed small container with something inside of it, or sometimes it can be something larger, but basically you can like leave a piece of chalk inside this closed thing and then all of a sudden there's writing when you open it and things like that. Uh, I know at the spiritualist camp, Camp Chesterfield, in Indiana, I've been there quite a few times, I love it, I want to do a tour of it and a video of it if I can get permission, they have in their museum, which I've never been in, a painting that was created through a cabinet producing medium. And what happened was the painting was left in a secluded area, completely untouched by anybody, and they asked Spirit to come forward and create something on this material. I believe it's canvas. And there's a full, gorgeous painting that was created, but it's not made with paint. The material, when it was analyzed, is closer to the powder found on butterfly wings and it just appeared on it. I want to be there when something like that happens. Like, I want to be in the room. I don't care if it takes 10 hours. I'll just hang out. I'll, I'll watch this thing and make sure nobody comes near it, and then I want to see it have stuff on it. Like, that would be incredible. And last but not least, my friend Duncan, Amanda, said, how much do you miss me, scale of one to a thousand? A thousand. For show. Sure. <laughs> That concludes the Ask Cat Q's hashtag and all of the Q&A questions celebrating my YouTube anniversary. So thank you guys so much for 
helping me get this together, for asking me the questions, being so involved, and just thank you for watching my channel and being around and helping me to do this for two years now. It's amazing and incredible. Uh, lately, I know some of you who do follow me on social media know that I've had a rough uh, month. I've been a little under the weather. I've had really terrible allergies. I've been fighting a cold on and off all month long uh, throughout my back. I've had a lot of weird stuff go down. I really planned on doing a whole lot more for the month of December, but it didn't happen. But I just, I really do appreciate you guys understanding and your support and your love as we move forward from this year into next year. I really feel like 2017 is going to be such an incredible year for so many people because how many of you feel like 2016 was just weird? Just weird. Not all bad, but really strange. A lot of, a lot of high strangeness going on. I'm not alone in that, right? I'm just very much excited for the new year and I hope all of you had a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday of your choice throughout the wintry time of year. And if you don't celebrate anything, I just hope that you're enjoying your winter and your December. But thank you guys so much for being here and being a part of this and I hope you guys have an amazing new year. If you liked this video, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you turn on notifications, you'll get notified every time I upload. I'm Kat and this is Paranormal Captivity. Have a strange day. Bye.